Welcome to Walking with Jesus. This is episode 77. Today we're going to be taking a look at Mark chapter 15, verses 42 through 47. Our topic for today is the burial of Jesus. All right, let's dive right in. This all happened on Friday, the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath. As evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea took a risk and went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Joseph was an honored member of the high council, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. Pilate couldn't believe that Jesus was dead already, so he called for the Roman officer and asked if he had died yet. The officer confirmed that Jesus was dead, so Pilate told Joseph he could have the body. Joseph bought a long sheet of linen cloth, then he took Jesus' body down from the cross, wrapped it in the cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone in front of the entrance. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where Jesus' body was laid. So compared to some of the things that we have been discussing over the last few episodes, this this, uh, particular passage of scripture is, is kind of a decrescendo, right? Jesus has ultimately given his life upon the cross, um, being just basically killed by the sins of the world. But now it comes time to bury him. One of the things that I always think about on Good Friday, the day that we celebrate the, the crucifixion, and when I say we celebrate, it's the day that we, we remember and we celebrate what Jesus accomplished through the crucifixion. One of the things that I always think about on that day is what would have been going on in the minds of the other disciples? What would have been going on in the minds of Jesus' mother and his closest friends and those who had been with him for the last three and a half years? You know, this is, for them, as far as they know, the end of the road. Now we know because we have the gift of perspective, because we have the scripture, we know that this is not the end of the story. But if you're hearing this story for the first time, you get to this place and it's like, oh my goodness. You know, if, you are, if you're watching a movie today, in today's world, and, and you're hearing this story of Jesus, you're just waiting. Okay, where's the moment where it's going to turn? Like, we've been in the climax, right? We've been at the, the culmination of everything that's going to happen. So now, where, where does the story turn? Where, where does it get better? How, 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 does, how does the happy ending come, right? And you're sitting there as he's dying on the cross, and you're thinking, okay, God's going to show up. Jesus is going to be revived. Like, something miraculous is going to take place. And I'm sure that this is what's been going on in the minds of Jesus' followers. But now, he's dead. His spirit has left his physical body. There's, there's nothing there. Jesus is gone, as far as they know. And so they begin the work of the next steps of, of what to do. So a couple of things. It says that this all happened on Friday. So this is the day of preparation ahead of the Sabbath. So for the Jewish people, you know, they're going to still keep the Sabbath. They have to um, kind of hurry up and get all these things done by sundown. Jesus dies at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You know, they probably got two, three hours of, of daylight left. So they are in a hurry to get Jesus buried so that they can take care of him. And then they're going to come back after the Sabbath to, to finish preparing his body for his final burial. So as his evening approached, this man Joseph of Arimathea. I think it's really interesting that a man of such prestige and power and authority did this on behalf of Christ. But it does let us know that he was a man waiting for the kingdom of God, but he was also a part of the Jewish high council. How cool is it when God puts people in places and positions of power and authority for his glory? And you know, this can happen, and it should be something that we expect to happen. You know, there's nothing wrong with people running for political office or 
or seeking to be on places like school boards, you know, or places of leadership within the places that they work, you know, um, becoming a supervisor or a manager position, or maybe even ri rising up through the corporate ladder and becoming a VP or, or maybe even a, a CEO. Think about the good that can be done in the name of Jesus when those people get into positions of, of power. So here, this man, Joseph of Arimathea, he asks Pilate for the body of Christ. And it says that he took a risk. And this was a risky move. Because what he was doing was he was saying, I align myself with this teacher, with this Jesus of Nazareth. Are we willing to take risks like this for our faith because of the convictions of what we believe? Are we willing to allow the world around us to know that we hold to the truth of the scriptures, even though the world is adamantly opposed often and desiring really to put the truth to death? This week in the news, we're hearing a story about how California desires to become a sanctuary state for abortion. Now, this is a state with out of control homelessness, out of control crime wave right now. All of these horrific tragedies occurring in and around this state because of bad policies. They're not spending money to fix issues that are already present. But what they're saying is, if Roe versus Wade gets overturned, which God willing that happens, if Roe versus Wade gets overturned, they're going to spend their state money to fly people into the state, pay for their hotels and their time there so that they can murder their unborn children. The level of perverseness and brokenness that has to go into that level of, of thinking is just beyond me. It's contradictory even to reason and to logic. But they are part of a world, a worldly, sinful agenda. And they're so wrapped up in their own wisdom and their own thoughts and ideas that they can't see this. This is why it is important for us to take a risk and to take a stand. It's not always popular. Sometimes there's consequences. Many times persecution comes as a result. But Jesus is calling us to take a risk. Especially, I think, right now in the culture that's going on around us with so many of the things happening today. You know, we truly live in a day today where good is being called evil and evil is being called good. Well, Pilate had a hard time believing this, so he actually asked one of the, one of the Roman guards to, uh, to verify that Jesus was dead. Now, one of the other Gospels, it tells us that uh, the Roman officer had been, begun going around and breaking the legs of the criminals. And this is something that they did to hurry along the crucifixion process because you would press up with your legs in order to be able to breathe. Well, if your legs were broken, you couldn't push up with them, and so you would suffocate more quickly and you would, you would die. Well, when they came to Jesus, they saw that he wasn't breathing. So one of the Roman officers there actually took a spear, shoved it up between his ribs, and pierced this cardiac sac around the heart, and it says blood and water flowed out. Well, when blood and water have gathered around the heart, it's an indication of heart failure that the heart has stopped beating, and they verified that Jesus was, in fact, dead. So he goes to Pilate and he says, no, he, he has gone. So Joseph was allowed to take the body of Jesus and he puts it in this linen cloth and he lays it in a tomb. How final do you, feel, do you think that this felt for them? I mean, the intentions here were really good. They're noble, right? I mean, Joseph has taken a risk to show honor to Jesus. But what do you think is going on in his mind right now? Can you imagine the heartbreak and the frustration and just the, the ultimate feeling of, of hopelessness? 
that was inside of all of their hearts. And I wanna, I just wanna use this story this morning to try to bring you a measure of hope. Because this is probably the darkest moment any of these men and women have ever known, they have ever faced. Their hopes had been reawakened and reimagined in this person of Jesus as their Messiah and their Savior. But they didn't understand that He had come first to save them from their sins and would later come to save them from the consequences of all sin by reestablishing God's kingdom. And that's the hope that we all have. So maybe you're in a place today where it feels a little bit final. It feels a little bit like things are just done in your life. And you have laid to rest. You have placed in the grave, so to speak, your dreams, your hopes, and your goals. And you've just decided to move on and move forward. I want to encourage you, don't give up hope because Jesus is not done. Jesus did not stay in the grave and neither do your hopes and dreams have to stay there either because God is still working on behalf of us all the time. So what do we do in the meantime? What do we do when it looks like hope is over? What do we do when it looks like the world is winning? and everything's just becoming more and more evil, and there's all of these mandates that we don't agree with or that we're frustrated by, and there's all of these laws that are being passed, and it just feels like our rights are being more and more encroached upon, and it just feels more and more like that that the enemy is just winning. Well, we keep taking risks. We keep speaking truth. We keep doing the right things, and we trust that Jesus is in control. Will you pray with me? Lord, I thank you for your life, for your death, and for your resurrection. I thank you, Lord, that even when it feels hopeless, even when we're in the darkest part of the night, that your light always comes. Because you have not left us, you have not forsaken us, you have not quit on us. You are working even when we cannot see it. So I pray, Lord, this morning that those who need it would have their faith brought back to life, that you would breathe fresh hope. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be like Joseph, to do the right thing to honor you and glorify you, even when we don't understand what's happening. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope God's Word has uh, lifted you up.